Hello guys, today we will see Power Electronics Lab Introduction. Most of the electrical engineering or electronics engineering students, they will have Power Electronics as one of their courses. Uh, especially electrical engineering students, they must need to go through Power Electronics Lab. So whenever you go to Power Electronics Lab, you have a lot of experiments to do. So today we will see what students need to perform experiments in power electronics lab so here are the list i had given first you need basic components and equipments and second how can you test the circuit before you test the circuit you need to construct or you need to build the circuit right so there are three possibilities or three different cases you can make the circuit under test and the third one is uh, possible experiments within power electronics what are the different experiments you can perform it can be in any university around the world so there are the there are several standard and classical experiments students can do within power electronics and also today we are going to see the first experiment that is nothing but buck converter so the buck converter uh, so what are the tasks you have to do in the lab and also i will show you exactly the experimental setup in the lab so now first come first so we will see the basic components and the equipments so basic components means it can be resistors or capacitors or inductor or power diodes, power transistors. Remember, we are talking about power electronics, not analog electronics. Analog electronics means just signal diodes, signal transistors, BJT, FET, they are enough. Uh, they can withstand few milliamps or low power. But now we are in power electronics, so voltage and current rating is very high. So the power rating is also very high. So we are talking everything in terms of power diodes, power transistors, power MOSFET and so on. So you need these components. Also you need transformers. Particularly if I mentioned we need isolation transformer. This isolation transformer will be used together with your oscilloscope in order to protect your oscilloscope from surge current for example and also it will help the user as well from electrical shock other than that you may also need some ICs or integrated circuits some switches and relays connectors cables heat sinks and so on so it's really depending on the circuit which you are going to build and use okay so these are the basic components you must need uh, in order to build the circuit. So other than these uh, components, what are the other things you need? Equipments. As I already mentioned in my preliminary course of electrical and electronic engineering labs. So we must need several equipments in order to perform the experiment in the lab. The first one you need DC power supply so the DC power supply is giving you whatever the DC voltage you want so you can take the power supply or you can uh, take the voltage and apply to the circuit under test and also you need oscilloscope every university they have their laboratories with different types of equipments and they use different model of oscilloscopes uh, so you first of all if you learn one oscilloscope it's kind of similar uh, idea you can also apply in other oscilloscopes but nowadays there are so many advanced oscilloscopes just like this one the one we are going to use in our lab so this is little bit different from the traditional oscilloscope it has more functions and less buttons okay and also function generators you need to generate different shape and different amplitude and different frequency of waveforms and you can also use a multimeter this is one of the very basic and needed equipment in the lab so multimeter can help you to measure the voltage it can be AC voltage or DC voltage 
it can also help you to measure current uh, it can also help you to measure ohms or resistance value and multimeter can also help you to measure the conductivity okay and probes the probes are the one which are connecting the oscilloscope and our test circuit or circuit circuit under test for example here you can see in the lab setup so we have the current probe and voltage probe which are connected to the circuit under test and then other than these equipments you also need different loads uh, so for example here we have the resistive load it can be uh, the combination of r and l load or it can be only r load so it can be different types of loads so it's really up to the facilities available in your lab okay so these are the basic equipments you must need in the lab in order to perform the ex uh, the test setup and do some kind of measurements from your circuit so you don't need all these equipments for one experiment so it's really up to the application circuit which you are implementing and going to test so sometimes you do not need this function generator sometimes you do not need uh, different loads just resistive load is good enough so it's really up to the circuit which you are going to build and test in the lab so next one is okay so now we know what are the things you needed in the lab first you need the components different components and second you need different equipments so by using these components what are you going to build by using these equipments what are you going to measure so you need the test circuit or we can also call test circuit as circuit under test so there are three different possibilities for students in any university any professor or any lab technician they can provide this uh, one of these three different cases uh, to the students the first one is breadboard so breadboard will look like this maybe you are already familiar with breadboard so then you need to get the components for your uh, for your circuit from your lab technician or lab assistant and then based on the circuit which you can see in the paper or in your laptop or in your computer you need to build the circuit in this uh, breadboard by using some cables and components and after you build the circuit of course you have to give the power supply and then you have to check the output and so on this is one of the three possibilities so build the circuit on the breadboard the second possibility is you will get this kind of printed circuit board with holes and you will also get components elect uh, electro uh, sorry whatever the circuit components you needed you will get from your lab assistant and then you need to solder them of course the soldering before you solder you need to make sure the circuit diagram you have in your hand is exactly correct and also the components are in the correct value then once after you have everything then you can solder them and build this kind of permanent circuit and this one is the temporary one on the breadboard so this uh, soldering on the pcb is the second possibility students can do uh, if your university or if your department want to give training to the students on soldering they will uh, recommend this kind of experiments okay so un then what is the third possibility the third possibility is already ready to use pcb will be provided in the lab so for example here we have this buck converter pcb so this pcb you do not need any components you do not need this kind of breadboard you do not need this kind of uh, hole through pcbs so everything is already prefabricated soldered and the pcb is completely ready so what you have to do here in the lab is just you need to uh, take the power supply from the power source and applying as an input and then you check the output or maybe you can check the voltage or current at different locations in this pcb of course the input current output current uh, output voltage uh, there are few, few parameters that you need to uh, concern about in, so in our lab we have the possibilities for all these three experiments but mostly uh, for this bachelor students who is going to do this buck converter circuit we will provide this kind of prefabricated circuit board 
or PCB. So it's very easy for you to use. You are not going to build the circuit. The circuit is already ready. Just you are going to connect with different equipments and make the measurements. Okay, so this is called circuit under test or CUT. And now we will see what are the possible experiments in power electronics. Okay. First, the goal of the lab experiments are, or generally we can call it as a lab objective, you need to learn, as a student, you need to learn the fundamentals of power converter circuits. We already know there are four major power converters, AC to DC, DC to AC, DC to DC and AC to AC. There are four different power converter circuits available and okay so at least to of course in each converters there are several sub classifications and also we can change different loads and so on so here uh, i just want to name a few experiments that you can do in the lab for example you can do the bug converter this is nothing but dc to dc converter so if you give the at the input uh, whatever you are applying at the input that will be reduced at the output that is the buck converter boost converter is also dc to dc converter so whatever the voltage you are applying at the input so you are increasing the value at the output so that is the boost it's boosting so this is a boost converter and also some converters can perform both buck and boost so that is called a buck boost converter and flyback converter this is also dc to dc and we have rectifiers single phase rectifiers three phase rectifiers and in the, especially we can also classify further like controlled single phase rectifiers uncontrolled single phase rectifiers it's based on the component you are using to build the circuit either diode or acr and similarly you have three phase rectifiers also the same classifications and we have inverters we have single phase three phase and also we have the ac to ac converters and how can you change the frequency and control the motor speed so uh, yeah so these all are different possible experiments you can perform in power electronics lab for example in our lab we have all these possibilities we can do uh, generally power electronic subject is divided into three semesters two or three semesters it's depending on the university power electronics one power electronics two power electronics three or advanced power electronics so in our case we are just having only one course in one semester so we may not be able to cover all these experiments and performing more investigation is not possible so we may have few of these experiments okay so these are the possible experiments in power electronics of course you can also build some other applications based on these ideas what you are learning in these converter circuits okay so now we are ready to move on further other than the lab experiment you need to do also simulation in matlab simulink so yes this is of course this is a software based simulation so the objective of this simulation is first of all as a electrical engineering student you need to know about matlab simulink how to use this matlab simulink and also you can compare these digital simulations with your lab work for example you will also have the waveform in your oscilloscope in the lab so you need to compare the waveform you need to model each circuit which i mentioned just before these are different power electronic circuits or power electronic systems. Um, so power electronic systems are based on these power electronic circuits, right? Okay, so you need to model each circuit or system in Simulink and you can or uh, together with SimSpace. Uh, here are some more details. So in order to perform the simulation on Simulink, what you have to do? First, you have to design the circuit, whatever the circuit you want to design. For example, it can be a buck converter and when you design this kind of circuit you must use the same values as you used in the lab assignment so for example if i provide you the prefabricated circuit board 
I will also give you the circuit diagram, right? In the circuit diagram, you can find the value of all the components. For example, the inductor values, resistance value, uh, MOSFET, what MOSFET I'm using. So all details, you can find it from the uh, paper, uh, the circuit diagram. You have to use the same values. Uh, okay, and of course, you have to use the Simscape special power system library in order to obtain different components. And the value of the components must be identical with the one you are doing in the lab. Then only it will be a fair comparison to compare with your digital simulation uh, based waveform against your physical experiment based waveform. Okay. So the values must be identical to the board in the lab. So after you design, you can simulate in MATLAB Simulink and you can compare with the measured and calculated values based on your lab experiment and what you are observing in your computer on the MATLAB Simulink. And also you can take a screenshot of your uh, scope in Simulink and also you can take the screenshot from your oscilloscope, uh, the physical oscilloscope equipment, and you can compare them and you can check what you learned from this comparison. So this is the goal of this uh, simulation and especially by using MATLAB Simulink. So now we are ready to move to the first experiment that is task introduction.